All right, dudes, welcome back to Duty's Daggers. Today we're doing something a little different. Um, I have a lot of knives uh, on my desk right now that uh, are in for review, some loners. Uh, mostly given to me, uh, lent to me by um, a good buddy, Jacob. Um, and I don't have time to do single videos uh, or single video reviews on them all. So I'm going to have to uh, kind of do a, a little bit of a rapid review video for you guys, which I think you'll like. Um, you know, I, I like to watch these rapid knife review videos. If I don't have time to watch a whole review of something, I just want to see some cool knives and and um, hear the reviewers' thoughts about them. So I, I like those style videos. I hope you guys too uh, do too, because that's what we're doing today. Um, I have got four, possibly five knives I'm going to do just quick little overviews about. Um, now... Full disclosure, I have not done cut testing uh, videos or private sessions uh, cut testing with any of these knives. I have carried and cut with them all, um, but I have not carried them for as long a period of time as I usually do for a full review. I've carried most of these for a couple days, not, not really the week to 10 days that I usually do. Uh, so keep that in mind, and um, let's freaking get into it. First one, I'm going to, well, is it better like that? I like that. I'll keep it like that. All right. So, first up, this is a Spider Co that I had never checked out before, and it's the Spider Co Chaparral or Chaparral. It's a CH, so I guess it's Chaparral. Um, this is a a really interesting, uh, cool little backlock Spider Co. We have some FRN handle scales, which uh, actually feel really good. Um, you know, sometimes FRN feels really cheap and plasticky. For some reason, Spyderco's, uh doesn't bother me. Um, we got that kind of bi-directional texturing on it. Um, we have this flat spot uh, with the Spyderco logo, and it says Chaparral there. Um, that's for the pocket clip to rest on, uh, so that you uh, don't tear up your pocket seams going in and out. You got it on both sides for the righties and lefties. We got that wire clip. Um, Look how incredibly thin the blade stock is. It's nuts, dude. This is a very smooth backlock. Um, very, very smooth. I don't feel any grit or anything in that pivot as I roll it out. It's really, really nice. Um, so it's a, it's one of those little big knives, right? Um, choked up, it feels really nice. Get a nice full grip on it, choked up, and I mean, look how thin the blade stock is. It's just nuts. Uh, I mean, look at it compared to the PM2. I know it's a much bigger knife, but just so you can kind of be able to tell. Look at that. Incredibly thin and slicey blade. In fact, I kind of want to see... Let's measure behind the edge really quick. It might not be super thin behind the, behind the actual edge, um, but regardless, since it's a full flat grind, and the blade stock is so thin, it's going to slice well regardless of what this measurement is. Um, okay, yeah, it's pretty thin still too, 16 thousandths. Um, so yeah, this is, this is gonna be a really nice slicey one. It's pretty thin, so it doesn't fill out your hand super well, but it's, you know, that's what you're getting, it's a small knife. Um, the blade steel on this guy is CTS XHP, which is really, really awesome. This is a Taichung Taiwan Spider Co. Um, same facility that makes the uh, Sleesh Bowie, the, the uh, McBee, the Spidey Chef, uh, the Techno 2, all those kind of um, titanium, um, titanium frame lock spider codes, those are all um, also Taichung Taiwan. They do a great job with their CTS, uh, CTS XHP from what I've heard. Um, this is a cool one, man. Really smooth backlock experience. I can thumb flick it. I don't know. Can I reverse flick it too? Oh yeah. Piece of cake. Well... I guess I need a little bit of wrist to get it on the reverse flick, but yeah, that's a really cool one. All right, next, let's um, let's check out this one. This is the um, Kershaw Launch 11, I'm pretty sure. Does it say? I'm pretty sure it's the 11. It could be the 13. I'm pretty sure it's the 11, though. I'll put it, I'll, I'm going to list all these down below that'll go take you to, um, to go check them out if you want to uh, look at them or buy them, whatever you want to do. They'll be linked down below in the comments and in the description. So this is an automatic um, Kershaw that's USA made. Uh, really, really cool. I have owned a Kershaw launch before, and I loved it. It was the Kershaw Launch 1. And 
this was back when I first started getting into knives and I very stupidly traded it, um, traded it away. And ever since then, I've missed it. And I ha my goal is to get it back in the collection because it really is an amazing knife. This is also an amazing knife. Uh, the Kershaw Launch Series is, um, I think, sometimes overlooked in the you know side-opening automatic knife world. Uh, they're really good, at least the ones that I've tried. They're all USA made. They all have aluminum handles. Um, very strong, strong, strong uh, snappy springs in them. I mean, I was blown away at how hard this thing fires. You can see my hand shake. It, it This thing absolutely shoots out. It's really, really cool, man. Um, kind of a sheep's footy drop point-ish blade. Um, the blade steel on this guy is 20 CV, too. Really cool, man. It's thin behind the edge. Um, I love kind of the futuristic handle. We got the kind of the hole in the blade, or in the handle, I mean. Um, kind of weird clip placement, but I'm glad that it's down here rather than up here. Usually if the clips are kind of up at the top, uh, it creates a hot spot. But since it's the opposite of that, kind of down on the bottom, um, it's not a hot spot because it kind of sits like right in here on your hand. So not a hot spot. And look at the sharpening choil, man. That's pretty good. Actually, you know what? Okay, it's not as good as I initially thought, um, but it's still decent. Uh, you can see where the plunge grind starts to slope up, and it's actually pretty close to where the edge ends. But you do have a little bit of room there. Um, this is just really cool, man. Um, I think that's a blue aluminum pivot collar in there, it looks like. At least I would bet that it's aluminum. Um, captive pivot. This is the little symbol for their in-house design. That's what that means there. See the American flag for USA made. Um, this is a great knife. Full grip on it. Choke back. You can choke up. Little flat spot right there. This is a cool one, man. If you're in the market for a nice, really strong, snappy little auto, this thing is hard to beat, man. Um, I'm not exactly sure how much it is. But I'll link it down below. You can go take a look. Alrighty, next is a Kaiser, and this is the Mini Roach. This is a knife that um, ever since it first came out, I wanted to get. And there's always just been something that I wanted a little bit more than this, and I, I just haven't gotten one yet. But after handling it, uh, this one here, I realized that I really, really need to make that more of a priority to get one because this is fantastic. It's a flipper and reverse flicker. Um, just the ergos are just insane. I know that this has been talked about a lot since the release, but man, just, you know, if you want to hear my two cents on it as well, they ain't kidding. Um, the ergos are so good, so good. Um, choked up, amazingly comfortable, even choked back. They leave this little part right here for your pinky to sit in. If you're choked back, that's where it lands. It's perfect, man. I don't know why you would really hold it back here. I wouldn't. Um, but either way, you can do it very comfortably. And this is just where it's at right here. This is where it's freaking at, dude. You feel so locked in. Wicked, wicked ass hollow grind on this baby. Oh, God, man. It's just, it's, it's really good. Um, I love the blade, kind of a, almost like a spear point-ish kind of blade with a fat swedge up here. Um, blade steel is 154cm. It's thin behind the edge, baby. Um, deep carry pocket clip that's in set. Um, one position only, sadly. Um, man, it's kind of a, you know, it's an interesting looking knife, but it is purpose built it is meant to just fit your hand like an absolute glove um, the flipper tab is removable i can't remember if i said that or not um i don't know man um do you have to take it apart to i think you have to take it apart to get it off or else i'd do it right now yeah you do um i don't know man you know the ergos are really good with it even with it on you know typically sometimes if there's a removable flipper tab or even knives with flippers um you know, you think maybe if you could if you could grind them off or, you know, remove them, it could be more comfortable. But I don't think that's really the case with this one. Um, I don't know. It's kind of like, you know, your middle finger kind of just nestles up right under it and feels kind of secure right in there. 
And then your pointer finger just kind of, I don't know, it just provides like a little shelf right there for your finger and it just feels good. So I don't know. I would try both if this was my knife. I would obviously try to take it off and see which I liked better. Um, but man, such a snappy detent too. Ugh, so snappy, dude. Really, really awesome. Um, I need to get this knife. <laughs> I really, really do. All right. Next, we got a concept. This is the Concept Fenrir. This is another knife that I've had my eye on for quite a while and just haven't really pulled the trigger on yet. Um, and again, you know, after handling this one, I, you know, I, I want it even more. Uh, I knew this was going to happen when Jacob sent me this box of knives that I would, I would, my, my, I would be adding some things to my list. Um, this is just a wicked ass design. This is uh, designed by Sparrow Knives. You can see their um, little uh, skull logo right there. Blade steel is what is it? S thirty five VN. Um, we got uh, micarta up here, and then titanium bolster, kind of opposite the way you'd normally see it down here. Um, it is yeah, it's it's a frame lock kind of yeah. It's I guess it's a frame lock. Yeah. I guess, is it? Or would you can I don't know if would you consider that a liner lock or a frame lock? I don't know. Because this this uh overlay is is completely covering the lock bar. So I don't know. Either way, there it is. Um thumb stud action, really nice. I do I would say the, the thumb studs are a little slippery. Um I have slipped off them once or twice. Um if you make sure that you're kinda lowered down behind them. Oh, see I just did it right there. Um they are a little slippery. The front flipper works really good. It's a, I don't know, I think the detent's a little stiff for the front flipper to be really super easy, um, but just get in the right spot and it's not a problem at all. Uh, I say that because, well, yeah, I can do the side finger one. Like I said, you kind of have to be in the right spot on the front flipper for it to easily, easily flip. But you can see once you get the spot, it's not a problem. I don't know if I can. Yeah, it's almost a little too strong to do, to do the reach around. Yeah, yeah. Um, nice choke up spot. Nice uh, kind of harpoon thumb notch right here. You know, when you have a, a blade with a harpoon notch and a choke up spot, you feel really, really in control of the blade because you're almost like you're grabbing in a pinch grip right here. Um, it just, I don't know, it feels like you can really, really control that tip very, very uh, easily and securely. I really love the blade on this thing. Um, it feels thin at the edge. I'm not sure what you would call that blade shape, but whatever you want to call it, there it is. Um, nice slope down to a thin edge. Um, this thing is just wicked, man. Nice uh, uh, milled titanium clip. It's just a good looking knife. You know, recently they had um, like a full dressed up version of this for a really good price. Um, it had damascus steel and it had Timascus scales. It was beautiful, man. And it was such a good price too. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it at the moment, um, but hopefully those come back soon. Um, I might wait for that, um, uh, you know, just wait for that version to uh, to pop up before I, I buy myself one of these. Because this is definitely on the list. Um, I just love the design. It's just, uh, like I said, it's just a wicked looking knife. There you go. Should we do one more bonus one? Let me reach down in the box and pick out one more. Let's see. What do we got? Yeah, I guess we can talk about this one. The Mini Beluga. Um, I've never checked out the, the, uh, the Mini Beluga. I had a full-size Beluga for a while. And I, uh, to be honest, I didn't really like it that much. Um... It was much bigger, and this handle, when you enlarge in it, it's really just like a big blocky triangle, um, and I mean big. It was big, um, too big, and but when it's this size, I like it much, 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 much more. This is a knife I would buy, you know, and I do plan on buying. Um, it's perfect in this size. Um, you know... <sighs> I wasn't expecting it, but this is very thin behind the edge. This is a slicey, slicey blade. Um, not the lowest tip ever, so you know, getting up there to the tip for utility cuts, not the easiest. But man, as far as like just slicing, this does really well. Um, the front flipper works fantastically, even though it's kind of a small 
front flipper tab, the way that it's positioned, um, the way that it works, it just, it works really, really well. There's a fuller for the reverse flick. You kind of have to be in the right spot. I noticed for me, it's kind of like, it's kind of like right at the end of this little dip is where I get my fingernail in there. Um, if you, if you go further down, you kind of have to do it with the meat of your finger rather than your fingernail, which is fine. You can easily do that too. In fact, yeah, now that I'm messing around with it a little bit more, that's really easy to do. Whoops. Yeah, so either way, you can do your fingernail up here or with your uh, the skin of your, uh, your finger down there. Um, you know, you get a full grip on it, even though it's the, the mini one, easily full grip. Deep carry pocket clip. The pocket clip is kind of like, um, you know, it's uh, it's back behind the scale there, so nothing in the way. Um, it's just a great knife, man. And I think they're around 50 bucks. Um, and I believe this one is in 14C. Yep, 14C 28N, so that's really cool too. I think the, uh, the full-size one is usually in K110, I thought. Um, I'm not sure. And you can get this in different versions too. Um, I saw a sweet yellow one, I think at, um, at Blue Creek Knives. I wasn't sure, but, um, yeah, this is, uh, this is a petrified fish that I, I really want to get. Um, this and the, uh, the flavorist are two that I think will be next, uh, the next petrified fish knives that I get will be, uh, one of those two. So there you go, folks. Hope you enjoyed these, uh, rapid reviews. And, um, again, thanks to Jacob for uh, letting me check out these really sweet knives um, really, really cool of him. Thanks, man. I love you guys. Please like the video before you head out. I would really appreciate it. Subscribe as well. I think I forgot to say that at the, at the beginning. Um, subscribe, please do that. And follow me on Instagram, duties underscore daggers. I just saw on, uh, on Instagram, we're at like, I hadn't been keeping track of my followers on there. We're at like 700. Uh, once I get to a thousand, I think we'll do, uh, actually do a giveaway on the Instagram. I think that'd be kind of cool. So, um, yeah, keep that in mind. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Peace and love, dudes. Bye-bye.